Hey everybody, in our last video, we were playing with this thermocouple, this Mac 6675, putting together a couple of projects to see if I could take that IC and hook some devices to it, get an analog output, created this thermostat, and briefly touched on the libraries that were used to interface the hardware with the software. I'd like to take a closer look at that. I think it's very interesting how we interact with the hardware using these libraries and uh, some of the conventions that people have created to do so. This one is simple enough that we could really get through it uh, quickly. There's not a whole lot going on to do it, but it's still very clever. We'll go step by step, see how it was accomplished, and then what we'll try and do is we'll hook it up to an old oscilloscope and see if we can pull this data directly off of the IC and come up with those computations ourselves without really the need for software. So let's get started. I've created a small program on the left, which is a sort of a self-standing version of what Yuri has created on the right, which is the library to interact with the IC. Uh, my version, functionally equivalent, has extra code added uh, to provide uh, values that print out and explain each step of the process. I've also created a small function that allows for the uh, printing out of 16-bit values for each one of the steps with leading zeros. If you, if you don't do that, it's just really hard to see these steps as they go along. But again, we're gonna see functionally equivalent and mine does provide at the end uh, a very simple printout in Celsius. Uh, nothing more. It's just a demonstration. Let's get started and see an output of one interval so we could talk through each step. So I've started it up and we could see the polling is just starting to come through now. Every four seconds, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the auto scroll so we can analyze this. If we look at the top one, we could see that it says the first pull from the most significant. This means the most significant bits. It's actually pulling 16 bits, but it's doing eight at a time. We can see that as a value goes to low and it pulls the data, it's gonna pull the first eight, it's gonna be the most significant, the most valuable. From seven to zero, it's actually going to do this read call twice. As we can see here, first time is over here and second time is over here. What we end up with for that particular value is only going to appear as an eight bit value because we're only pulling eight bits. We don't see that it's the top eight bits of a 16 bit value. So what we do after we receive it right over here is a shift left eight places. And by shifting it left eight places, we could see now that as far as a 16 bit value goes, it's now sitting in the right position. This happens to be based on what the device can support a relatively low temperature value. So from the most significant side, we're only seeing a relatively low value. This is to be expected. And when we see the computation, we'll, we'll see that obviously this makes sense as this is the temperature of the room, not an oven or something like that. So we go again to this function SPI read, which is down here. And with the clock going, which we'll get into later, we read the next eight bits. And when we read those next eight bits, what we're going to do is we're going to OR them into the lower eight as they come in. And what that is going to do is that's going to populate the lower eight bits with those values. So if the bit happens to be a zero, it'll remain a zero. If the bit happens to be a one, it'll populate it with a one. So what we end up with is an overlay in the lower eight with whatever value is returned from the lower eight, joining the two together. What we end up with is a 16 bit value, just like that. So just to go back, we ended up with the upper eight bits stored in the lower eight. We shifted it over eight, and then we populated the lower eight in that lower section to give us this 16-bit value. Once we were left with this value, we have to know from the data sheet that the first three values do not represent temperature values. They have a different purpose. If we look here, we could see that the third value specifically has to do with connectivity of the actual sensor at the end. It's a, it's a resistance value that it uses to read to make sure that the, the portion that actually senses the temperature is connected to the device. Yes. We can see that it's masked in hexadecimals four, so it's a third bit over. And if the third bit over is high, then it knows it's not connected. He happened to use NAN, not a number. It could be uh, not connected or disconnected or what have you. 
but he he chose NAN, which is, which is also a standard. So that's fine as well. So a test is done to see if in fact it is not a number and return that value and print that out. However, if that's fine and that test is done, does not care about that number anymore, nor does he care about the first two numbers. So we could get rid of all that. And how do we get rid of all that? We can push the whole thing back three digits by shifting to the right three digits. So now we take this value right here and we shift everything over to the right three digits. And we end up with this 16-bit binary value, which you could then convert into a decimal value and you end up with 95. As it happens to be for this particular IC, in order to derive the Celsius value, you take whatever this numeric decimal value is and divide by four. It's just simply how this IC is designed. In dividing by four, which we see right here, and also in his code, we end up with a value of 23.75, and that is the temperature in Celsius. And we can see that this process repeats itself over and over again. Each time we pull the device to get that value. So I'm going to attempt to demonstrate this now using a two channel oscilloscope, nothing special. You could use a non DSO oscilloscope an old Tektronics or what have you accomplish the same task. In this instance, as I've set it up, I'm going to be using the CS signal. That's the chip select signal as the trigger. And I've made that available in yellow just to display so people could see what I'm working with because ultimately I'm going to be using this as an external trigger to show timing later. We could see that as it goes low, that's when the measurement stops on the chip itself and it outputs the value to the serial output pin timed against the clock, which currently cannot be seen yet because that's going to be moved over in just a little bit. And currently it is fluctuating. If I go and I grab this as I'm talking, we could see that in binary, it will fluctuate and it'll count. One important value to look at here is the third one over. So we got one, two, three. This one we could see is always a zero, unless of course we go and disconnect one of the leads and that one just went high. Well, the other ones go high too, but we don't test for the other one. We're only testing for that third one when we do that test hexadecimal four when we add that value in the program, and that's to see if the leads are connected. So as long as that is low, which it now is, it means that we have a probe connected to the chip. The other two are not part of the measurement, so these are ultimately the three that are slid over to the right so we can measure the value. Uh, one up top here is a dummy bit, doesn't matter. We take that resulting value that becomes Celsius. As this is serial and synchronous data, it's sent with a clock back to the ESP32 or Arduino. So I'm going to set this oscilloscope up now so we can see what that looks like. I've reconfigured the oscilloscope. I now have the trigger going to external trigger. And I now have the SCK. The clock is going to the yellow. The data is going to blue. And we can now see that at the moment of the falling edge of the clock is when the data is red. Having removed the probe, we could see the third bit is high and it's red on the falling edge of the clock right there. Connect it back in and it drops. And here I'm just zooming out for an instance just to capture what a, just a moment of this looks like, waiting and taking a pull and then waiting again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the stop button and freeze this. This is what I got from the captured picture. A string of zeros, one, zero, one, one, one. Zero, 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 zero. You can see that right there. I shift to the right three places, effectively removing the last three zeros, and end up with a value of one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero. The decimal value of this is 92, and 92 divided by four is 23 degrees centigrade. And that's how we're able to read the serial data right off the chip and determine what the value is if we have the need to do so to figure out how to write a driver. And that's using an old oscilloscope with no logic analyzer on there and just doing it with basic math on a piece of paper. 
We could in fact use a device like this, a logic probe. I would like to get into this in the next video when we use a more structured protocol that'll make something like this a lot easier. This one I picked up for about $8, but we'll get into that again in another video. I hope you enjoyed this video on taking apart the libraries for interfacing with the hardware of the 6675, as well as using a basic oscilloscope to see these signals and data and decode them manually. Hit that like button down below, helps me out a lot when you do. Hit subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?